are almost there. And by almost there, I mean, honestly, the only thing left to do is just to finish it. Of course, that was true when we started, so I guess we're no closer than when we started. You talked about reversing the polarity of a triangle of some sort. Circumference of the triangle. <laughs> You know, to be honest, there's not a lot of difference between Canadians and Minnesotans. Sorry if you're from Canada to insult you that way. It's custom because nobody else in their right mind would ever do it that way again. <laughs> Worth keeping on the parts shelf. So we can throw it away in eight to ten years. Or you can sell it at my estate sale when I die. Okay, Caitlin? Gotcha. It's safety third, right, Caitlin? And they had an extra one in there, so I figured, huh. I'll hold on to that. Might come in handy one day, like when Caitlin's wanting to learn to hula hoop. <laughs> it's harder than it looks. Welcome back to Cross Thread Garage and Salvage. I know a bunch of you guys are brand new subscribers, and this week's video is going to be a lot different than last week's. If you saw last week's video with the collection that Jerry has that I found while I was out in Illinois, it's unbelievable. It's doing great. Best performing video we've ever had. Thank you for watching. This week, though, we're back in the garage, and this is the deal, guys. The channel is is kind of self-explanatory. Cross thread garage. We're not doing anything right. <laughs> I, the fact is I'm an average guy trying to teach my 15 year old daughter how to work on old trucks like my Cummins powered Chevy that we're working on this week. I'm an average guy doing average work that the average guy feels good tearing apart in the comments section. So have fun with that today. So what we're gonna be doing is fixing an overheating problem by replacing a radiator building a new core support for a different sized aluminum radiator. And then this hood has been driving me nuts for most of the year here that I've been driving it. And uh, I remembered when we pulled it in and the hood popped on its own. I've had a plan for a while. So we're gonna see if we can figure out a different way to attach this hood. Thanks for watching. If you appreciate what you're seeing here, make sure to like, share, subscribe, tell a friend. Leave a comment. Leave a comment. I mean, an amicable one. You're being nice. Actually, the bad comments help drive engagement too, so the algorithm likes it either way. Caitlin doesn't though. Don't hurt her feelings. Do you really want to be the guy beating up on a 15-year-old girl? She, what would your grandmother think? <laughs> I bet she'd like our show though, so <laughs> make sure you tell her about it. <laughs> this week on Cross Thread Garage and Salvage. You heard it here first, folks. I need to get the C10 out and get the chummins in here so we can start working on that. You guys are gonna get to hear two cold starts here this morning. First is the C10, small block Chevy 350. The second is 12 valve Cummins. I know, what a day to be alive. Might have a little parasitic draw on the uh, battery, which of course is nothing a good sale won't fix. I guess there's room to get the truck in here. Not a lot of room. Yeah, but I meant like with enough room to get the other truck in here. Just leaving rubber everywhere she goes. When they're lowered seven inches, you can't really go bump to bump on the turns. It kind of drags the tire. A little cold, do you? No, you don't have to. Okay, guys, the hood just popped here. That was shut. And I might need to fix that while we're working on the radiator. For four years, I've wanted to do a forward flip hood or tie the hood and the fenders together so that they slide off together so you can work on it easier. All right. Back up, but don't hit that trailer. See, the hood's popped again. I think I've got a weak spring in there, and it's just popping because there's not enough tension on the spring. Well guys, uh, 
I was driving this the other day and it started overheating, which is an unusual problem for a 12 valve. But the way this is, was set up originally, I've got the fan on a switch. So I'll go ahead and do that. Hear the fan running? I turned the fan on, I was sitting at a train crossing, trains going by and it just kept climbing, it went from 185 to about 215, 220. And it reminded me, I have an aluminum radiator sitting in here uh, with parts to plummet that I bought like four years ago. So I know it's probably too soon to install those parts, but we're gonna go ahead and do it this week anyways, because while I'd love to be working on Caitlin's 41 Ford, rebuilding her flathead, uh, turns out Dave Ramsey told me that I don't have an envelope big enough to start doing those projects yet. <laughs> no, you're broke. I made it a quick release hood when I built it. Just the way that the, the hood naturally goes up on these when it's on the hinges, it's not really high enough to get underneath there and work comfortably. Plus, since it has a 12 valve in it, when I took it places, I wanted to be able to show it off. And uh, I figured a removable hood was the best and quickest way to do that. And this little latch up here has been working. But now it pops on its own when it's driving down the road. So it has a safety latch. It's got the pins through the cowl, but I really don't want to fold it up on itself. So we're probably going to reattach this with a different hood hinge set up this week. This is going to be wet. Oh, oh yeah. All that water is coming right at me. Guys, what we've got here is a 12 valve Cummins. Sorry, sorry. So Blowing your nose on a microphone. My bad, I'm ill. Guys, what we've got here is a 12 valve Cummins. It's a 6BT, it's a 5.9, whatever you want to call it. It's a powerhouse. It's got enough llama torques to pull the stump right off the foundation of your house. So what it doesn't have is a good cooling system because as you can see, that's just kind of laying in there. So Caitlin, we're gonna go ahead and get the uh, factory Dodge radiator out of there today and replace it with an aluminum one. This should be fun. Every time I measure one of these correctly and get it right the first time, I'm like, I couldn't have done that two years ago. Yeah, gonna go buy a lottery ticket today. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hey, not loose. Um, before you do that, number one, you're tightening it. Number two, number two, <laughs> That's going to drain coolant everywhere. We well, probably we'll need to figure water. out how we're going to catch it. I would guess with some cat litter. I don't know if we have enough cat litter, but I see a Rubbermaid tray over there that would be perfect. Yeah. Is that mom's? It's not even ours. It's Mrs. Fisher's. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jason, if you're watching, let Jen know we're sorry. But... <laughs> It's for the greater. Why don't you turn it sideways so it's oh. underneath the entire radiator? Oh, actually, this is a uh, inlet and outlet side, so everything's going to drain from this side. So you, you're right. You did that Thank right. You. Yeah, you did that good. You knew what's going on. So while Caitlin's getting that upper hose off of there and starting to drain. Wait, I'm actually like doing it right. Yeah, I don't know why you're starting at the top. Normally, you'd want to start at the bottom. Well, let I it drain saw it, down. and it needs to come off. It does so. need to come off, so sure. It's on you. Uh, I'll give you the rundown here. This is a HX35 turbo from a second-gen Dodge truck. Uh, the baby H1C turbo that came with it um, whistled a little louder than this one, but it didn't provide as much power, so... Got an HX35 with a straight pipe from the down pipe here backwards. It just drops somewhere underneath the cab. So, you know, don't park in it overnight with it running. You won't wake up the next morning. But if you're driving down the road, <laughs> if you're driving down the road, it's just fine. Um, have a terrible fuel leak on this thing that one day I'm gonna fix, but it's gonna require me taking all of this apart and resealing this VE pump or maybe putting on a P pump because it leaks horribly at the back of the pump. It's not the fitting, it's actually the back seal of the pump. But that requires taking off this cover, removing the timing gear for the pump, and um, 
I don't want to do that. So, okay. All right, so we're gonna leave that up so it drains. Go ahead and you can see the bottom one down here. What? The bottom hose. See it down here? Oh yeah. You're gonna pop that bad boy off. Ugh. Is this gonna be hard to get off? I don't know. Let me get a light in there before you do it. You're gonna wanna use that socket. Probably. To take that clamp off. Probably. I mean, the screwdriver seems to be working okay right now. That's shining right in my eyeball. And literally not helping me at all. Well guys, we've got a GoPro camera that um, we constantly fight with. And you missed a little bit of that. Well, we got the lower hose off here. And the camera didn't catch any of it. I did. Because it's a GoPro. <laughs> Caitlin caught a little bit of it. Uh, seriously, GoPro, if you're watching, and I know you're not, uh, your products are horrible. Absolutely the worst camera to use. Hands down, bar none. Randomly shuts off. Battery lasts like 25 minutes when you're recording in 4K. Uh, sometimes the mics connect, sometimes the mics don't connect. Now I'm just ranting because I'm listening to this thing dribble all over the floor and reminding me that I'm a 40 year old man and I gotta go pee. So, I'll be back. Okay. Again, the nose blowing on the microphone. You started that as soon as I blew my nose. All right, we're not gonna be reusing this radiator. It's been patched several times. It's got some, some JB Weld patches going on there. So Caitlin cut the snout off down there because that was getting in our way. Um, if I had to do this all over again, guys, he would have. I would have moved the motor back four inches. I would have moved the, the motor mounts. I would have moved everything back four inches. It would have made this so much easier. I wouldn't have had to cut away all the original sheet metal that was right here that covered up the original radiator on this advanced design pickup. So nothing I can do about it now. There we go. Up and out. No. All right, so you can see what we're dealing with here. There's a, there was a tab, you see right over here. There was one over here too, but it's fell out, I think a while ago. So we're gonna need to make a new mounting system for mounting bracket, cross member for our radiator. But let's pull the new radiator out. I think it's measured, I think I measured it so it'll slide in in between here and there without having to do any of that cockeyed rolling it into place type of stuff. So I can't remember where I put it. It's been four years ago and I moved to Ohio, so. Why'd the box move? Probably a mouse. Well, what There's am no I? No lid on it, I know that. Oh, this black one? Yeah, there are a bunch of like silicone elbows and small pieces of metal. Tubes? Probably. Hmm. Yeah. Nope. Does the light switch work up here? No. That's why I gave you the flashlight. I was just wondering. Hmm. That, is it that one? No, it doesn't really work. Nope, that's probably up the light on mom's car. I would not advise. Did you find it? Exactly how I planned this, but Ugh, you did it. I can't see this, but Kaylin's blowing her nose. Also, she just put the magnetic base all over the oily block. Oops. Great. Oh. Now 
I can't get this off. <laughs> you just shout in your own ear. Oh. <laughs> These are the, that, that actually... I honestly don't remember what I was thinking. Okay. We'll figure it out. It's a puzzle. We might need to get your little sister because she's better at it than we are. But... <laughs> hey, if it doesn't work, we've always got the credit card. We can just start buying okay. some other stuff. Don't be stupid. No, just hold it. Don't. It's not going to stick to brass. It's magnetic. Brass is not oh, yeah. ferrous. Sorry. Okay. Look at that nice shiny aluminum ring. Ooh, this has got two fans on it. Whoa! Just hold on to that. We might need to pick up. So this is the relay for oh, the thermostat switch. Yeah, it's probably, well, it's aluminum. It's lighter than it could be, but it's probably heavier. Camera will stick to that. You think magnets stick to aluminum? No. Oh. That's the thermostat switch, the relay, which if we put it in, will be the only relay in the entire truck. Because I didn't want to figure that out when I was trying to wire it up in a day and a half. So, you know, listen, if you're driving an antique truck and it can't survive a little electrical fire, it's really worth owning anyways. Uh, yeah, so let's just put that back in a bag so we can lose it later. All right, we're going to see how this goes in here. If I took my measurements correctly, and I rarely, rarely do. Foam on the back of this. Boy, those fans are big. I wonder if those fans can be turned around. Are you putting this in backwards? No, because this is the inlet. It's gonna come. How come the fan was on the other side the other time? Because we had a pusher fan uh -oh. on the other time. These are pullers. Oh no, they can be turned around. They're just bolted to the sides here. Flip it around, be fine. Ish. Be fine-ish. I think. I mean, stop it. Why? Because I'm going to loosen these two so I can run them off. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Need the wrench, too. <laughs> We're going to... You're going to take it because I'm holding the camera. So put two hands on it. Yep. And find a safe place to set it. Anywhere is fine. Nope, not there. That's not... Why would you put it on a pile of dirty laundry? You said anywhere is fine and that's... Any safe place is that fine. That is literally cushion. No, that's gonna tip over. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Here, take this camera. Okay, now it's time to bend all the fans we can. To be fair, there's already a few bent. Awesome. I think what we have here Cute. is a situation where the outlet is directly on the air conditioning compressor. Mm -hmm. Why can't anything ever work for us? Mm -hmm. Like, why can't we order something and just be able to put it in? How nice does that look? Uh, unfortunately, the inlet is directly in front of our engine oil fill tube, and the outlet is directly like touching directly underneath our air conditioning compressor wheel. Air conditioning? Yeah. 
I mean, this truck doesn't have air conditioning. Yeah, the 90 Dodge that this came off of. Mm -hmm. In case one day I wanted to put vintage air in there, so. Um, hmm. Hmm. I don't think we're gonna put air conditioning Not awesome. in here. So let's just take that thing out. But I do think I'm gonna go ahead and make the decision that this truck will never have AC. It's got a cowl vent there. It's got two windows. It's got everything it needs. It's got two windows. <laughs> the problem is, this is still in our way. Well, then, um, bend the tube. Whoop. Yeah, see? Not a problem. This just has to move with it. Oh, that. Yeah. Don't do that. I just did what you did. I didn't realize it was attached. Now we realize it's attached. Well, I thought you knew it was attached. Okay, so that could... Just listen to this and then flip this around. Just could flip, yeah, just flip it around. Oh, I'm also going to need a new uh, inlet for my thermostat housing because that one's pointed, obviously, that way. And I need one that goes that way. Oh, I have one of those. What? I have one of those somewhere. Where? I have no idea. I Great. planned this four years ago. <laughs> Guys, I'm gonna go ahead and pull the AC compressor off of there. We'll worry about finding a belt that fits later. Caitlin is going to swap. Am I tightening it or loosening it? No, that would be loosening it. But currently we're doing oh. nothing with it. But well, now we don't need pushing therapies. it this way, We'll tighten it, hold that there. So let's oh. see what's moving down here. The whole thing moves. You can actually spin it off of there. <coughs> so we'll tighten it up. I can still fill it when I put oil in it that way. Let's grab the radiator back out of here so we don't damage it. Pull the air conditioning compressor, swap out the thermostat housing. Your turn. Order a smaller belt. Put it all back together, fill it up with coolant, Order. fire it up, and find the leaks. Let's go ahead and get the belt off of that, Caitlin. Cut it? No, don't cut it. Oh. We cut it off of a motor that was seized up on a 41 Ford. We're not, <laughs> we're not gonna cut it off of a 12 valve. You're gonna, you're gonna get a socket wrench, just the wrench, the square end of the wrench in there. That's a tensioner. You're going to put pressure on it. It's going to take all the pressure off of the belt, and we're going to remove the belt. Which way am I turning it? Well, that I don't actually know. You can look, I would should say be able Lucy. To, should be able to look at it. Eh. It's probably not Lucy. Well, the, the belt's coming over the top of it, so you want it to swing this way. I just said that. So push down, right? Push down. Push. What? Back here. Push down on it. Keep going. You gotta go far enough to get enough tension off of it. Can let, I step on it? No, don't step on it. Just switch spots with me. No, oh. no. You gotta put enough tension on it. There. Okay, now let go. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm blowing my nose, just so you know. <laughs> okay, that's a weird thing to tell somebody. I've got another 12 valve belt up there. That one looks like it was already checked and ready to blow off anyway. So we'll pull the other one out because it is a 12 valve belt. I just don't know if it's an air conditioning belt. There, This is literally a belt that I've had in my garage for five years because I got it out from underneath the back seat of a Dodge Cummins that I bought and they had an extra one in there. So I figured, huh, I'll hold on to that. Might come in handy one day, like when Caitlin's wanting to learn to hula hoop. Harder than it looks. It's more saggy. Well, it's more wrinkly. No. But they appear to be the same length, guys. So I'm gonna be calling to get a belt for a non-AC 12 valve. This will be for sale on the website this week, guys. <laughs> I'm gonna get yourself some custom Caitlin art. She's pretty good. She does pretty good. Caitlin, show us what you drew. Oh. 
Well, while she's been doing that, <laughs> I've got an AC compressor ready to come out. Only about 6,800 volts later. She's good to go. We're gonna hold on to that. That's worth keeping on the part shelf. So we can throw it away in eight to 10 years. Or you can sell it at my estate sale when I die. Okay, Caitlin? Gotcha. All right. Well, guys, I believe we've got room to work now. So let's try it again. I might wash up before I touch that nice clean aluminum radiator with some TKO hand wipes from the Sweet Patina. If you guys don't have a set of these, not only are you missing out on a good time, you're also missing out on clean hands. So, so Caitlin's going to grab the bracket that was left on the side of the block. There's four bolts in there. She's going to grab that real quick while I go scrounging around over here looking for, and I see it already sticking out of my scrap pile for some square tubing. I think I got a couple of sticks of that. Yep. One more. And I think I remember about three or four years ago, I had those cut down the same length to use for this project. So I saw recently on another channel, I can't remember the name of the channel and I'm editing, I'll find it and I'll put it on the screen here. But another guy, I think he's in Canada or Minnesota. Oh. You know, to be honest, there's not a lot of difference between Canadians and Minnesotans. Sorry if you're from Canada to insult you that way. That's going out. <laughs> Anyways, he had a similar setup and I don't remember how I had had this kind of figured in my head, but I'm planning on using this cross member here that I made um, when I cut out the center section here. Plan on using that to build off of maybe running my Heim backwards through here and letting it, that means we're gonna have to have a big bend in it and it should go nose down somewhere here in front of the, the bumper. So the hood will actually be standing upright here in the front. We'll figure it out. We're just figuring it out as we go, that's all. So we got a new addition in the garage this week. If you've been with us for a while, you might notice that uh, the moose antlers were never there before. Those actually came from Alaska. A guy named Dick Marsh shot that moose about 30 years ago, I think. Anyhow, Dick was a missionary with the organization that I currently work with, and uh, he was actually preaching the night that uh, the Lord called me into ministry, which reminds me of one of my favorite Bible verses, 1 Thessalonians 5, 24. The God who called you is faithful, and he will complete it. All right, guys, on this channel, you get a little bit of Caitlin mechanicking and me trying to fabricate. Ding. We're going to fabricate. So it's time to figure out what we need here. And I, we've got fixed locations in the cowl that correspond to the hood. And it's these grommeted holes here and over there where the uh, quick attach pins go through. So what I'm going to do is measure from the center of the hole out to this cross member. And that will give us our overall length. We're going to have to have some bends in that square tubing. That's 37 inches. If the other side's 37 inches, that means that I was probably not paying attention to what I was doing the day I built this because, <laughs> let's just be honest, it'd be a miracle if it's the same. 36 and 15 sixteenths. It's close enough. So 37 inches is our basic overall length. That's going to include our heim joints on either end, which are going to be adjustable. So... What we need to do, Caitlin, is get some heim joints fixed in the end of one of these, weld it in, at least weld the nut in, screw the heim joint in, and attach it to our cross member here. Know what I mean? Is it still going to be locked? 
Yeah. So what will end up happening is it'll go down. That latch will still will still use. I'm going to have to replace the spring so it's got more tension on the spring. And it'll lock in here with the pin still so that it doesn't flop around on this end. I don't know how I'm going to attach it down there. All right, Caitlin is marking out inch and a half square tabs out of this piece of scrap angle iron. That's what we're going to use. We're going to cut those, use them for the tabs on either side of the heim joint. So we'll attach two of them like this, like a sandwich. And those will be our tabs that will lock in. And then we can adjust by spinning these with a nut. So we've got a nut here that fits and that'll end up getting welded into the end of our square tubing. It looks like these nuts are actually gonna fit, they should fit right inside of the tube. That one did. Oh, I gotta get this one in. Good, perfect, I'll do that, same thing there. Okay, except you, I don't think you actually got it on the nut. Yeah, I think I missed. Hey, that was a good one. Jake, are you ready to go to work? Hmm? It's been a couple of days since we've been in the garage, and I gotta tell you, I've been sitting on my hands all day to keep from clapping. That's how happy I am to be back in the garage with you, Trigger. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. Caitlin's inside finishing up just a little bit of homework, and uh, while she's doing that, I'm gonna take this piece of angle iron that she marked out the other day, and uh, go ahead and cut those tabs out. Hopefully by the time I'm done with that, Caitlin is back in the garage. And then I can start making sense of the plumbing and piping, tubing, flexi hosing situation I've got for this radiator. So hang tight. We're almost there. And by almost there, I mean, honestly, the only thing left to do is just to finish it. Of course, that was true when we started. So I guess we're no closer than when we started. Should go pretty smoothly from here on out. Not a lot of excitement, just some drilling, grinding, cleaning, test fitting. And Caitlin should be here in about 10 minutes, so. And we know when Caitlin shows up, she brings the party. All right, as you can see, we've got these, ow, ow man. Oh, those are still hot. Yep, those are hot. <laughs> Whew. So we drilled some holes in some metal and we've let these cool off long enough to uh, handle them now. Time to go ahead and attach some of our um, heim joints and heim joints. Caitlin, did you bring the party? We removed the tabs on the back so that it would fit in between this rail and this rail here, which hold the fins in the grill in place. All right, we're gonna test fit this hood here. We've got the radiator set down in there. Um, basically where it should be, but I'm wondering if it's too high now. 
Yeah, it's hitting the hood over here. Yeah, every time you push it, it goes boop. But we may be able to adjust that. Off. Nothing ever works the way it should. Wait. If it goes down there, it's out of the way. The fan could go right here. The fan could go behind it. That's not where I wanted it though. Well, we don't always get what we want. Probably gonna have to put the fans, reverse the blades, and then reverse the polarity so the fans are pushing, not not pulling. But you can see what we can see here. Um, it's at kind of an angle running towards the motor. If I stand it up straight, there's a big enough gap there for sure for the fans. What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? What can we do? First polarity of the circumference of a triangle divided by Herm's theorem. All I said was literally turn the blades over and then reverse the polarity of the motor. You talked about reversing the polarity of a triangle of some sort. Circumference of a triangle. <laughs> Can't do that. All right, we are going to test these fans with what I might consider the most elegant of um, electronic assemblies. Some random wires here and here. And hey. Which way is it turning? It's turning that way? I don't know, I wasn't watching. Who did it in? Yeah, put your finger in it. That's the best way to test the fan. Turning that way. Okay. Now I'm going to switch these just to confirm that that will. <laughs> I guess I could have just switched them on the battery. Derp. Is it going the other direction now? It's still going that way. Is that the way it was going the first time? I don't remember. So I need to run it long enough to see how it's pulling air. So hold on to that. That's pulling a ton of air towards me, which would make it puller. So blue positive pulls it to me, which is how it was initially set up to go on the radiator. So but we want it to blow. We want it to blow through this way. Yeah. So I think we need to both turn the fan blade over and reverse the wires. Yeah, let's do that. Nailed it. First try. <laughs> You're getting good at that, except you left the wrench over there on oh, the side. I always set. forget that part. Yeah. Common. No, you lost the wrench. Where is the little wrench? So last time it was blowing at you, it wasn't sucking towards you. You said. Last time it was blowing to oh, me. Oh, wait. Never mind. And if it was on the inside of the radiator, it's pulling air through towards the motor. Right. Now, this is going to be between the radiator and the grill, pushing air through the radiator. Yeah. Simple solutions to simple problems. That's what you get here at Cross Thread Garage on occasion. Every once in a while, you get really complex solutions that don't actually solve anything. Complex solutions for simple problems. Yes. That's what you get. You get what you get and you don't go with it. How do we have so many flat surfaces in this garage that we can't work on? Unbelievable. Clear, clear that workbench off right there. Put all those tools right. away. So we're going to use these uh, radiator attachment um, deals. I don't know what to call these. They're not zip ties. They're just... Uh, Wait a second. Like a barbed, they fit on there. Yeah, so it's going to go through like this. And you're going to kind of, it's going to move some of the fin. And then this pack I already had here at the house. Whoa. So there's only three of them. Which Whoa. is, you know, 
Mm. Pretty consistent for what we do. Oh, Halfway, good. all the way. Don't put this on camera. But what is the radi what is where does the liquid go when you put it in? So these right here are actually hollow. The liquid goes down through it. And it dissipates the heat through these fins. It draws oh, the heat out. There's, there's little Yeah. So look down in the top here. Oh. You see them? Yeah. Okay. So we pre-cut some pieces of angle iron to run down here right and here. weld to the cross member. The one's right in front of you. Oh. The ones, the ones you're literally breathing against. <laughs> Where is that little piece of soapstone? Soapstone? That's what it is, it's soapstone. Why? Why is it soapstone? I believe that's because God made it that way. I don't, I don't. <laughs> like, why is it called that? Oh, so yeah. All right, we've got the angle iron bolted on to the side of the uh, radiator. We're gonna set it in here now. Caitlin. What? Well, why is this tilted so much? Why isn't this sitting up straight? Because I want to, I want to weld. It crooked? No, I want to weld the back of that angle iron to that piece right there. Crooked? It's, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's crooked. Oh. It gives us more room here. It gives this, uh, everything free room to spin. You can actually get the belt on and off of there without pulling the radiator, which would be, you know, ideal. All right, guys, I think we've got where we need it now. You can see how these line up with those vertical straps on the on the grill rails. But you can see where it's sitting down there on that cross member. And the clearance, this piece of foam is in here because we're getting ready to throw the hood back on to make sure the hood clears these corners. But if it clears, that's really the position we're looking at right there for the new radiator. So. I'd say that'll go down. Needs to be adjusted. And. The Bel Air Airman will today open the door. Are you reading that warning label in Spanish? No, habrá rompa. It's tacked in there to the grill. It's another support that goes down to the cross member on the frame, which is just going to secure that front end a little bit more so it won't bounce around as much so we're about to find out if i welded it too close together okay where's that nut this nut will be the same size as the head of that bolt so find me a socket that's that size and we'll push it through from the back. Look at that, we got it tight. Okay. Not no, the top one? Not the top one. All right, guys, that is one radiator installed. Not plumbed or electrified with the fans yet. Stink. What? Duh. Did you, we put the wires down did in you, there. Did you? We need the wires. Ow! Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can reach, we can probably fish through. God. I'm pretty happy with how stout that is. I could shake the whole truck just by grabbing the radiator, so. And we got plenty of room for our upper hose. Our downer hose. Plenty of room to put a belt on or off of there. Plenty of room for our lower outlet. <laughs> so. Tomorrow, we'll go ahead and hook up the plumbing on that. And then we will, because it's already like 10 o'clock at night. And then we're gonna take our time joints here that Caitlin put together this afternoon. And we'll tack them onto this center cross member here, just like that. And then we'll tack them underneath the hood somewhere in here like that. I said the other day I needed 37 inches total, but that was from here to the center of the grommet. I'm actually six inches out from there at that, um, at the hoop that comes under the hood here. 
So I'm 31 inches total length. So that's the plan. Ready for bed? Yes. Thought so. We're back at it here, getting a belt put on here, which should not be, it's not like it's rocket psychology, but it, for some reason, when you look at it, it's like this could go a hundred ways, but it only goes one way. Oh. Just like that. We got this mounted in here last night, which is, you know, it's a nice custom job, custom fabrication. That's what we do here at Crossroad Garage and Salvage. I mean, it's not custom because it's like, what's gonna get you into SEMA? It's custom because nobody else in their right mind would ever do it that way again. <laughs> One off custom fabrication here. Gotta change this bad boy out right here. Ah, oh, son of a gun. Hey, listen, now we know how the hose goes or the belt goes on there. It's great because we gotta take it off because the alternator is tied into the thermostat housing. So mm, yeah, pull that, pull that belt off of there one more time while I go get some what? thermostat housing RTV out of the drawer because we're going to have to make a gasket. Take this ground off right here. If that's not off, the alternator won't swing out of the way. And then pull this. So what's this there. bolt here is a pass-through bolt. Oh. Boy, I hope that can come all the way out with that radiator there. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, that should, that should be able to come out. And then this alternator is just going to roll out of the way. And we'll grab the retaining bolts for that thermostat housing. Swap it out for the new one. This is the motor pull, like hook so you can lift the motor out right there but there's actually a rubber gasket in here so I don't think we should need any RTV actually huh it's gonna blow my nose with that go ahead and blow your nose I'll edit it out <laughs> things dirtier in the back seat of a minivan isn't it Caitlin do you know when a joke becomes a dad joke Dad tells it? When it becomes apparent. <sighs> hey, put on some safety glasses. The internet's going to yell at us. Not squinties. You can't see what you're doing. Glasses fall to be off fair, my I, did, I did teach her the safety <clears throat> squints. That's an off-camera move. On camera, we're trying to be safe. Because across the garage, it's safety third. Right, Caitlin? <sighs> Somebody on the internet tell me where I went wrong with this girl. Rude. <laughs> Goes up. This has got to go back on. Hmm. I feel like that's not the way that was. I feel like maybe this is deeper than the other one. It is. So I had the bright idea to ask, do I have the right thermostat? And the answer that came back was no. The 97, 94 to 97 thermostat is much bigger. So old thermostat. So we go with our outer seal. And then this guy goes on top of that. Nice and tight. This guy slips in here, goes over top of that. And that, my friends, is a proper seal for the thermostat housing. Well, we're just wrapping up some finishing touches on the wiring here, guys. So I try not to film too much electrical work and I didn't film the plumbing of the radiator because it's honestly about as entertaining as watching paint dry or you know, sitting in your cabin listening to see if you can hear the mouse in the wall fart. So. So you didn't get any of the work being done there, but it is done. Go ahead and hop in there, hit the power switch. She's moving some air. All right, I should mention too, this wiring going over the top of the radiator, that is um, temporary, <laughs> which means I have intentions of fixing it differently one day, probably putting that relay and switch in that I talked about, but for now it works. So if we go, Right there, 
I actually should avoid this, especially if we come up. So. Quick run with some matching paint. Dries, dries quicker when it's hot. I don't know if you knew that or not. Pro tip, get a good boiled finish on your paint. Turn it out about three turns. Turn it. Okay, so we want it to come out here. We want this flat. We're gonna call this top. So we want it to bend up here and then bend it back. Here. Put it down here. This would be like it's all the way screwed in. Come in six and a half. I'm gonna to need to cut off an inch and a half minimum. But I'm gonna say we're gonna cut off two and a half inches. And that'll give us adjustability on both ends. All right. And then we gotta weld a nut in the end of this. All right, we're just going to use a square here to line our hole up. Put the back up where it needs to go. Don't put, you gotta keep your arm under the hood. 
Oh. Put the screws in? Oh no, wait, there's nothing to screw them into. So the bolt is on the fender. Yeah, I see. Actually, mine does. Actually, can I just screw the thing in? Don't turn the arm, just turn the heim joint That's at the end. That's what I'm saying. Wow, this really hurts. Where does the washer go? Does it go put your, like Put the this? nut bolt from the inside out so the nut is on the outside. Ow. You're getting crushed. It's in, but I'm not sure. Can you hold the hood? I think it's way too long. Can you hold up my hood? The hood. Can you like Short. lift it up so I can see? Okay, first adjustment here. We're a little long on my side. A little short over here. A little short on Caitlin's side, which probably is gonna be adjusted by me shortening mine and it'll bring the hood around. Okay, right there. Doesn't look bad left or right. Did yours come back? No. Nope. I think so. Well, yeah, now it's not, now this thing isn't over here. It's now actually in the middle, so. Yeah. You wanna close it? It looks about the same on both sides. I think yours needs to come back a little bit. Mine also needs to be shortened up because it's, the bar is pushing this up. This isn't even touching back here now. So I need to shorten mine. I need to shorten mine and you need to lengthen yours one turn. Okay. So the one thing that's happening is these are twisting and I can't tell if it's a problem or not. Oh. Let's see how it closes. Wow, that bar. <laughs> Did it move around? It didn't move around. I mean, it like, moved a little, but no. All right, I don't hate it, but I do need to get this latch back up on some washers. So let's get that adjusted and get the radiator filled with fluid. So it's over on the ground over there. How about the good stuff? It's the add to anything antifreeze. She's a slammer. She's also a ripper. Huh. Unlock it. Now. Putting weight on the bumper. Hold on, we're gonna have to pull the hood up to do that, so. Oh yeah. Let's see if I can master my hood removal technique here. Said, Just a wrench, everybody relax. It's oh, a dumb child lock on this. Drain's closed. Wait, is there a difference between a child lock and a dumb child lock? Because Yes. So this is the one it, you have to push the thing so it doesn't get hit on it. So it, it's about the child's intelligence. No. What does it say if you couldn't get it open? I haven't had a Crossroad Garage pro tip on this episode yet, so I'm just gonna tell you guys, if you're building your hot rod and you need a good waterproof fuse block for under the hood, Go ahead and grab yourself one that's made for a marine application. I will tell you though, it's a, it's a trick to remember if your bait pump or your depth sounder is your fuse for your headlights. <laughs> Just start pulling and checking, that's all I can tell you. There's a couple of these in here. Plus some water. And well, hold on to that because you're going to need to go fill it with water. It would be really inconvenient if I just ran into mom's car. Flip the power switch on before you hit the start button. See the air coming out of it? Yeah. 
just gotta get all the air out of the system. All right, we got the system bled and it puked a bunch of fluid out. It's actually still running off the cross member. And I don't know if you can see the smoke pouring out of here. It's just a, just a little bit of steamed diesel and oil coming off the side of the block. It's just a, it's just horsepower escaping is all they just do. So I think, Caitlin, that means we're done for now. So only thing we got to do now clean up the shop, oh. which is a perpetual job. And it's all yours. <laughs>